You're talking about now money in politics, which brings us to Lee Fung, who uh, writes for The Nation, is a reporting fellow at the Investigative Fund, blogs about money in politics at the Republic Report. Um, Lee, can you talk about what you found when it comes to dark money, what we know about who's funding the elections all over this country? Well, Amy, uh, we unfortunately don't know a lot about the donors uh, in this election. A lot of uh, analysts who have taken a look at the midterms are calling this the dark money election. We're seeing hundreds of millions of dollars being poured into campaigns through um, 501c4 nonprofits or 501c6 business leagues. These are groups that do not have to report their donors. And we still don't know, actually, the um, proportion of the funds that are spent through these vehicles until after Election Day, because some of this data is just coming in. Uh, a lot of these groups just went on air in the last few weeks. Um, we took a look at this dynamic in a recent piece for The Nation. Um, when the Citizens United decision was handed down, Justice Anthony Kennedy uh, made a distinction. He said that um, these outside money groups, uh, these independent expenditure committees, super PACs and uh, the dark money groups, um, they cannot coordinate with candidates. Uh, the reason being that uh, if big money donors, billionaires or millionaires can lean on candidates, that would have a corrupting influence. Unfortunately, in, over the last four years, we've seen candidates uh, brazenly uh, uh, appear to break the law. Uh, many candidates are, uh, appear to be coordinating with many of these dark money organizations, uh, including the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Americans for Prosperity, the nonprofit affiliated with the Koch brothers, uh, many of these other organizations. Some of them spawned just this year to influence specific races. Um, we're seeing very little enforcement from the Federal Election Commission. Uh, that agency, which, ch which is charged with enforcing election law, is deadlocked three to three with the three um, Republican commissioners voting basically in lockstep since 2010 to block any investigation of uh, potential wrongdoing. Uh, so we're, we're seeing uh, this, this election is turning out to be kind of the Wild West. Not only are uh, campaign entities raising and spending um, unlimited amounts, much of it in secret, uh, but we have no cop on the beat. We have no en enforcement of uh, election law because of this gridlocked FEC. Well, Lee, in this Wild West, who are the main uh, interest groups and what are their objectives uh, in terms of all the spending that they're putting into this election? What policy goals do they have? The largest dark money group in the country is the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, that's a 5016 business league that's funded primarily by corporations, foreign and domestic, though they maintain that their uh, foreign dollars are segregated from their domestic dollars. Uh, this organization is the largest lobbying group in D.C. Uh, it, it primarily receives its funds from about 56 different uh, corporations, uh, Dow Chemical, Prudential. And they've said that their priorities are restricting the powers of the EPA, uh, fighting back on uh, many different regulatory issues uh, proposed by the Obama administration, everything from uh, the new rules on um, uh, financial advisors, the fiduciary rule, to for-profit colleges. Um, there's a range of regulatory issues that they will be leaning on Congress to block in the next two years should Republicans expand their majority in the House and take the Senate. Uh, in addition to them, uh, there's uh, uh, Patriot Majority, which is a dark money group uh, backed by Democrats that's affiliated with uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, uh, Americans for Prosperity, the Koch Brother Group. Um, there's also another uh, about dozen different uh, 501c4 uh, uh, dark money groups that are affiliated with the Koch brothers that are designed to influence specific demographic groups. So there's the Independent Women's Forum, backed by the Koch brothers, uh, to, to influence uh, uh, the women vote. There's Generation Opportunity, to influence um, uh, younger folks. Uh, there's the Libre Initiative, to influence Latinos, and so on and so forth. Uh, in addition, as, as I mentioned, uh, many different s Senate candidates are now creating their own dark money groups uh, to influence their specific races. For example, in Kentucky, there's the uh, Kentucky Opportunity Coalition, a dark money group uh, affiliated with Mitch McConnell uh, that has raised uh, undisclosed money and is uh, dumping money into, into that race. Uh, a similar dynamic is going on in North Carolina, Alaska, and other places. Is it true that the dark money will soon um, uh, out, uh, the amount of money that's spent will be more when it comes to dark money than the money that campaigns actually spend? 
and we won't even know where it's coming well, we're from? We're on that trajectory. Um, campaigns are, are, are still uh, limited by contribution limits. Um, and, and same with political parties. Dark money groups face no restrictions. And in the early days of Citizens United, um, there was a, a hesitancy to use dark money groups because uh, the IRS rules um, uh, are promulgated in such a way that say uh, the primary purpose of some of these nonprofits um, cannot be on political activity. However, the IRS has been very slow to actually define what primary purpose means. And because of um, uh, increasing congressional pressure on the IRS, we haven't seen the IRS take uh, uh, action to d define primary purpose or to revoke um, the nonprofit status of uh, groups that are clearly just uh, created to influence elections. So as um, it's become more commonplace to use these types of uh, tax entities to uh, move uh, hundreds of millions of dollars into elections with no fear of uh, enforcement from um, the IRS, uh, we'll see this trend continue. Uh, very quickly, before we go to break, um, you mentioned uh, Senator McConnell, uh, his race uh, against uh, um, Alice Lundergan Grimes. Can you talk about where he's getting his money from? We recently had a uh, story in The Nation taking the very first look at where uh, Senator Mitch McConnell receives uh, his own personal fortune. He's one of the wealthiest members of the Senate, worth over $22 million. Um, most of this money comes from his in-laws' family. He married Elaine Chow, the former Secretary of Labor in the Bush administration. Um, her father founded the Foremost Maritime Corporation, a large shipping company. Um, there, there were many revelations in this piece, so one of them being uh, most of these ships um, owned by this company are registered in the Marshall Islands. Um, largely for tax purposes, and also they use the flag of convenience from Liberia, meaning um, they uh, sail their ships under Liberian maritime law, uh, which is much more relaxed than U.S. maritime law. In addition, uh, Mitch McConnell uh, has made coal the top issue of his campaign, saying that environmentalists and Democrats are the reason for the decline in production for Kentucky coal. One interesting part of the story is that, in, in fact, um, the, the, the decline of coal is much more complicated. Um, the rise of natural gas uh, plays a big part. But the other big part is that uh, America is relying more and more on cheap imported coal. Well, the foremost maritime corporation, um, Mitch McConnell's in-law's family, uh, exports cheap uh, Colombian coal, um, uh, potentially undercutting uh, Kentucky coal. And in a recent um, inspection by Colombian officials, uh, they found <clears throat> as much as 90 pounds of uh, cocaine on one of these coal shipments. We're going to break and then come back to this discussion. Lee Fong will stay with us. We'll be joined by John Nichols, and I want to thank Ben Jealous for being with us. Ben Jealous, um, who has uh, been doing a lot on the elections, particularly in the South. He's the former head of the NAACP, and he's the chair of the Southern Election Fund, which he started with Julian Bond. They're working on several reports with the New Georgia Project. Uh, ben Jealous is also a partner at Capor Capital, senior fellow at Center for American Progress. Thanks so much for being with us. When we come back, we'll continue to look at the elections tonight at 7 Eastern Time. Democracy Now! will be on the air for five hours covering this midterm election night. Stay with us.